Hi, my name is Pedro Reis. I am technical support engineer at Bentley and today I will be demonstrating a modeling strategy on how to use movement functions to simulate a train passing over a rail track on an embankment. So here in this case we already have our embankment and rail track. So let's add our moving point loads by going here, create point, add point movement, we can zoom in. Now we can press tab to snap this line with this point load. Click on it, we can do the same for the other one. click on it and this way we are simulating the contact point between one of the axles of the wagon with the hill track. Now we can easily edit the coordinates of each of these point loads at the selection explorer. Note that if we set the Y coordinates to zero we are going to have loads acting at one of the boundaries of the model which might cause some boundary effects. So to avoid this, I'm going to set these two loads starting at 0.2 meter in the Y direction. We can also add some loads at the selection explorer. So I'm going to add minus 150 kilonewton for both cases, just as an example. And here you also see that you're going to need a path and a movement function. So the path, if you click on it, you'll see that there's already a line. And this line pops up because this point is properly connected with this beam, which is related to this line. So here it's easy. And here you're going to need to add a movement function. So let's add our movement function. I'll call it train speed. I'll say it's linear. And uh, for instance, 35 meter per second, which is approximately 120 kilometer per hour. Okay. Now we need to do the same for the other one. Path. You're going to have this line, which is this one. And here the movement function we already created, so we can use it. Now, if you want to model more axles, we can simply select both of these moving point loads. Press array in the Y direction. You want two of them, two and a half meters apart. So one copy will be added. Press OK. And now we can do the same thing for the other side of the wagon. Create array in the Y direction. And let's insert, for instance, 19 meters from each other. OK. And here, as you can see, we have created eight moving point loads. These four are moving according to this line, and these four are moving according to this line. Now here on stage construction, let's add a new phase where we activate our moving loads. So create a new phase, double click on it. Now let's call it moving loads. Make sure to select dynamic as the calculation type. And here for the dynamic time interval, I know that my model extends 35 meter in the Y direction and our moving loads are also moving at the speed of 35 meter per second. So it's going to take one second to go from the starting point to the end point. I will assign one and a half second, but feel free to choose your own time interval. And I'm also going to save 50 steps for my calculation. Now, OK. Now activate the point loads. In my case, the only point loads are my, are my moving loads. So everything is uh, ready for calculation and let's calculate. Uh, 
After the calculation is completed, we can inspect the calculation results with Plexus output. And as we can see here, the only step that we can see is the last step of this calculation phase. That's why we saved more steps. So if we click here, we can see all the steps that were saved. And if you select one of the initial ones, we can actually see the moving loads moving. There's also some boundary effects here at the boundary because the, we have pointing loads acting at one of the boundaries of the model. You can even create some animations with this. I will show you some of the examples that you can do now. I made three different animations, deformed mesh, displacements and axle forces on the rail so we can observe the effect of the moving loads throughout the calculation. I hope that you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.